for joining us. We'll see you right back here on News 2 at 10. Good evening, I'm David Muir. Tonight on World News Strategy Session, just back from his first trip to Iraq, the new Secretary of Defense meets with President Bush amid reports top generals want more troops. Attention shoppers, your procrastination could actually pay off. Last minute holiday deals and big savings. Black and white, a stunning experiment about children, dolls, and race. And can you show me the doll that is the nice doll? And making tracks, the horse racing revolution changing the sport from the ground up, hoping an injury like Barbaro's never happens again. From ABC News headquarters in New York, this is World News. Good evening. For some time now, President Bush has insisted he can't make a decision about a new strategy in Iraq without hearing from his new Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates. Well, Secretary Gates just got back from his first trip to the war zone, and he went straight to a meeting with the Commander-in-Chief. ABC's Jeff Morrell is at the White House tonight. Jeff, good evening. Good evening, David. Today, for the first time, President Bush convened his new war council. The White House says they did not make any decisions about a new strategy for Iraq, but the president is said to be pleased with their progress. At Camp David this morning, President Bush conferred with his new Secretary of Defense about the way forward in Iraq. The one-hour meeting capped a whirlwind week for Robert Gates, who was sworn in Monday and left the next day for Baghdad, returning home last night. The White House revealed none of what the two men discussed, but Gates went to Iraq to see if a surge of up to 30,000 U.S. troops would stem the violence. Never mind all these generals. Soldiers told him they need more boots on the ground. Iraqi leaders said they would not object to additional forces, and even top military commanders who had originally opposed an escalation now agree it is necessary. I, I would characterize it as momentum. Retired General Jack Keane has been pushing for a surge since last summer, even recommending it to President Bush. If you want to stop the level of violence, we have to force it to stop. How do you force it? You have to bring in more U.S. forces to help do it. That's the reality of it. With that change of heart by commanders in Baghdad, the path now seems clear for a troop surge, although polls show the American people are not on board. Just 17% favor more forces, but General Keene and many here at the White House believe the public will come around once they begin to see some real progress in Iraq, David. You know, Jeff, we know there was also movement at the U.N. Security Council today passing sanctions against Iran for refusing to stop its nuclear program. Have we heard anything from the White House tonight? Interestingly, uh, still no official reaction from the White House, and that may be, David, because they would have liked to see even stiffer sanctions Regrettably, than the ones that were passed Iran today. Sanctions. But it was hard enough getting Russia, which does a lot of business with Tehran, uh, to go along with these restrictions. In fact, the president had to do some last-minute lobbying over the phone with President Putin just before this morning's vote. All right. ABC's Jeff Morrell at the White House tonight. Jeff, thanks very much. Talk of adding more troops to the 140,000 already in Iraq comes amid rising concerns that the military is already stretched to the limit. Last week, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Colin Powell, said the army is broken. Tonight, ABC's Laura Marquez on what some say it will take to fix it. Marine Colonel Steve Zotti has just returned home to his family after a year-long tour of duty training Iraqi troops. More than two-thirds of the 175,000 active-duty Marines have been through Iraq since the war began. Many, three, even four times. It's good in that we have a lot of experience now. It gets bad because human beings over time starts to wear on. And their families. No one knows that better than Colonel Zadi's wife, Priscilla, and their three daughters. He really misses birthdays and he misses all the holidays, and it feels like incomplete sometimes. Colonel Zadi says something's got to give, either grow the reserves or grow the active duty forces, an idea that has now been embraced by the president. I'm inclined to believe that we need to increase in the permanent size of both the United States Army and the United States Marines. The Army's Chief of Staff, General Peter Schoomaker, advocates adding 30,000 more troops. But at 6,000 a year, that will take time. So it will have no impact on the surge of troops proposed for Iraq. A larger army also comes with a hefty price tag, 
for both soldiers and equipment. For every 10,000 troops, it costs an estimated $1.2 billion. You gotta buy more guns. You gotta buy more packs. You gotta buy more boots. What's going on, man? How you doing? It will also take more recruiters. This year, all branches of the military met their recruitment goals, but it was in large part due to relaxed standards for age, health requirements, and criminal backgrounds. It is not an easy job uh, to get somebody to sign up to go to war. General Nash says the best recruiting tool is a satisfied soldier, which is why it's important to give these troops much needed downtime. You can't, that's great. Colonel Zadi has 30 days at home with his family before he gets his next assignment. Laura Marquez, ABC News, Washington. In the Middle East tonight, there are rising hopes of a possible peace breakthrough. Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas met today in Jerusalem. The first high-level talks between the two sides in almost two years. Israel agreed to ease travel restrictions and release $100 million in frozen Palestinian funds. The two leaders agreed to meet again, but did not set a date. Back in this country, meanwhile, the tension at airports across the nation's midsection is finally beginning to ease a bit tonight. The bad weather is breaking up, the planes are finally getting off the ground, and those crowds of stranded people stuck in the terminal are starting to thin out. The problem now, though, is not having enough planes to get them where they want to go. Five of the six runways in Denver are now open. But between today's holiday travelers and those still stranded here, it is a mess inside the terminal. Terrible. The airport's busiest carrier, United, says it has a full slate of 900 flights today for the first time since the paralyzing storm. But those planes are already fully booked with passengers who were planning to travel today. The biggest challenge now is finding room for those whose flights were canceled. This mom is at her wit's end, even with tickets. Adele Gilman is afraid the long lines will now keep her from a flight. I definitely don't want to spend four days in the airport with three kids. Sarah Bell, her husband and toddler, aren't sure if they've left themselves enough time. So we were just had no idea it was going to be like this. So I guess, I don't know what we're going to do if we don't get on. Brittany Westlake has been here since Wednesday. The only ticket she could get was for the day after Christmas. Now she's watching people originally booked for today fly out ahead of her. It's just really frustrating because now like these people aren't making it out but we can't get back there to get on standby. Now, if you feel for those passengers, airline officials have not been able to bring in extra planes which means that passenger won't be the only one forced to wait to fly until after Christmas. The other holiday rush of course is shopping and we are deep into the final hours of what's expected to be the busiest shopping day of the year. As ABC's Gigi Stone reports now, retailers are making one last push to make a deal. Retailers are biting their nails until the very end because shoppers this year are pushing it until the end. And the consumer is waiting till the absolute last minute like we've never seen them before. Stores under pressure need a blockbuster weekend to meet profit targets. Sales are expected to go up 5%, less than stores were hoping. So they're pulling out all the stops, expanding hours and ratcheting up discounts trying to lure shoppers with doorbuster items. The prices are good. The sales are remarkable, so it, it's not that bad. A lot of things are 50% off or more, so it becomes worth your while. Stores are slashing costs for digital cameras and flat screen TVs. We have a selection of great prices throughout our electronics department. And they're marking down clothes for cold weather because there hasn't been any. Cashmere started the season at price points above $100 and will likely see it go as low as $20, $30. Music to the ears of shoppers like Dottie Langan, hoping for bargains on those last-minute presents. I have a lot to do. Nine grandchildren, not much time to shop. I'm running around crazy. I have to get this done. Real procrastinators still have one last chance. A lot of stores will be open tomorrow. And here's a piece of advice. Save those gift receipts. Many stores are becoming a lot stricter when it comes to their return policies. David? All right, ABC's Gigi Stone in New York tonight. Many thanks. Still ahead here on World News this Saturday, black and white, recreating a landmark experiment about children, dolls, and race. 50 years later, the painful responses to some very simple questions. Galloping into the future, you're looking at a horse racing revolution that you probably can't even see. How it's making the sport of kings safer. And at the end of the broadcast tonight, the Soho of the South. 
why one small Kentucky town is overflowing with artists. This is World News, brought to you by the Salvation Army. Contributions to the Salvation Army go. Feeling that big cold all over your body? Immerse yourself in total cold relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Liquid medicine that speeds relief to every inch of you for big relief fast. Alka-Seltzer Plus liquidates your big cold all over. Also available in liquid gel and new liquid. Mother Nature gave some animals warm winter coats, but others depend on Burlington Coat Factory for designer coats up to 60% off department store prices. And now with our new cash back policy, there's no reason to be left out in the cold. My legs felt weird. I knew that. The tingly and tightening sensations the urge to get up and move that kept me from falling asleep. I just didn't know if it was restless leg syndrome or not. So I did a little research. I learned that RLS symptoms usually get worse in the evening or at night, just like mine. If this sounds familiar, do what I finally did. See you, doctor. Science suggests vitamin D is a key to calcium absorption, which helps keep bones strong. New improved Caltrate has more vitamin D. Keep your bones strong to keep your body strong. New Caltrate, the key to strong bones. I got Buster when the kids moved out. He brings so much energy and joy to my life. I feel like a teenager again. I want to keep him as healthy as possible. A love this strong deserves high quality nutrition. IAMS Large Breed has more protein than the leading competitor and no fillers. IAMS has everything dogs need and nothing they don't. For the healthiest he can be for life, a love like this deserves IAMS. And now, IAMS introduces a new line of healthy canned recipes your dog will love. Our Saturday Spotlight tonight focuses on a young filmmaker whose high school documentary has left audiences at film festivals across the country stunned and has reignited a powerful debate over race. The filmmaker's premise was simple. She would reconduct a social experiment first done more than 50 years ago. She wanted to know how much has changed, instead learning how much has not. At a young age, I already knew the standards for a girl like me. The documentary is just eight minutes long, but the thoughtful debate that has followed has lasted far longer. Just 17 years old, Kiri Davis is an aspiring filmmaker. She had a vision for her high school film project after learning about a simple doll test used to help make the case for desegregation in the landmark case Brown versus Board of Education. In 1954, psychologist Kenneth Clark conducted the test, asking black children which doll they preferred, the black or the white. The vast majority chose the white. The findings were not surprising for the time. With her camera in hand, Kiri sat across from nearly two dozen children in New York City. Can you show me the doll? that you like best or that you'd like to play with? This one. I like that one. Can you show me the doll that is the nice doll? And why is that the nice doll? She's white. And can you show me the doll that looks bad? Okay. And can you give me the doll that looks like you? Fifteen of the 21 children preferred the white doll. More than 50 years later, her results mirrored Dr. Clark's. And those results have stirred audiences from New York to San Francisco, from Chicago to Atlanta. You hear the audience go, oh, they really gasp because they feel the pain. Thelma Dye works at the center founded by the late Dr. Clark and says the results of Curie's test are just as painful as they were in the 1950s. 
I wouldn't take the film to mean that every black child's self-esteem is suffering. We have to continue to ask questions about the film, continue to ask questions about its meaning. For Kiri, the film was personal. I remember when I was little, you know, you told, I can't be princess because I'm black and princesses aren't black. And it's those little things that kind of get to you after a while. Rory Scott runs the Children's Center where Kiri conducted the test. He wants to make sure the film is seen by as many people as possible. Everybody sends jokes around on their email, I send that film. What he sees in the documentary are children who cross all economic lines. Kiri never thought her documentary would get so many people talking. Another lesson for this student in the power of her own lens. What do you see when you look at the dolls? Hopefully one day it won't be such a problem and that maybe there won't be a quote-unquote good doll or bad doll. You know, Carrie's film has earned countless honors. In fact, she's been asked to speak in our nation's capital in February for Black History Month. But Carrie tells me more important than all of the honors, she'd like the chance to do this film again years from now with different results. Up next here on the broadcast, Christmas for Barbaro and why horse racing is on track for a big change. Give, give. All I do is give to you, Sophia. I deserve it, Marcello. Giving gifts? Get lots more holiday gifts for your money when you get them at Burlington Coat Factory. The place for great gifts for the whole family. Get up to 60% off department store prices on famous designer labels. Plus, a new cash back policy. The more you give, Marcello, the more you save. Burlington Coat Factory, where you celebrate by saving money. My husband had a heart attack last year. It was the worst. His doctor told him he should be taking Bayer. He is now. Taken regularly, Bayer Low Dose helps prevent one out of three heart attacks. I expect him to be around for a while. Aspirin is not appropriate for everyone, so be sure to talk to your doctor before you begin an aspirin regimen. Bayer, expect wonders. Hey, McMillan, you gelling? I'm gelling in Zinfandelin. And so is my new bride, Helen McMillan. I'm so happy my eyes are welling. Dr. Scholl's massaging gel insoles is so soft, they make your feet feel outrageously comfortable. I'm jelly. You're so not jelling. Dr. Scholl's. Putting breaking news into the hands of a million readers a day, Carl is a formidable man. But he was no match for something smaller than a drop of ink. It KO'd Carl so fast he didn't know what hit him. It was a clot. Like Carl, if you've been hospitalized with heart-related chest pain or a certain type of heart attack, what doctors call ACS, chances are you've had a clot. But now, Carl's doctor is helping increase Carl's protection against heart attack or stroke by putting Carl on Plavix. Plavix, in combination with aspirin and other heart medicines, helps provide greater protection against heart attack or stroke than aspirin and other heart medicines alone by helping keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. If you have a stomach ulcer or other condition that causes bleeding, you shouldn't use Plavix. When taking Plavix alone or with some medicines, including aspirin, the risk of bleeding may increase. To minimize this risk, talk to your doctor before taking aspirin or other medicines with Plavix. Additional rare but serious side effects could occur. Ask your doctor about Plavix today, because no matter how formidable you are, you're no match for a dangerous clot. If you take Plavix with aspirin, continuing to do so will help increase your protection against a future heart attack or stroke beyond aspirin and your other heart medicines alone. You may be feeling better, but your risk never goes away. Help stay protected. Stay with Plavix. Tonight, ABC presents the best holiday gift of the season. Winner of five Academy Awards. These are a few. Julie Andrews stars. The Sound of Music. Tonight, 7, 6 Central, only on ABC. Horse racing fans are wishing Barbaro a very Merry Christmas. The horse who won the Kentucky Derby but then broke a leg in the Preakness has received hundreds of cards and gifts, including a wreath made of organic carrots and a green apple Christmas tree. He is on the mend, but Barbaro's injury is one reason horse racing may be on the verge of a radical change. Here again now, ABC's Jeff Morrell reporting from the heart of Kentucky's horse country. You're not going to find a prettier sight than this. John Burke trained some of the most expensive racehorses in the world. That's the reason we get out of bed at 4.30 every day, right there. Normally, he wouldn't dare risk injuring these million-dollar mounts on a snow-covered track. But here at Keeneland, after 70 years racing on dirt, they've switched to this new synthetic surface. 
It's kind and it's consistent. And I think the horses are happy on it. Dirt tracks freeze in this type of weather. But even in the best of conditions, they can be dangerously hard and uneven. Here, buddy. It was on a dirt track that one of Josephine Abercrombie's champion thoroughbreds broke down. I've never been so upset in my whole life. And they had to put her right down right there on the track. It was just horrifying. Barbara's being pulled up! Even non-race fans were horrified watching Kentucky Derby winner Barbaro break his leg at the Preakness in May. This week, for the first time, we saw him without a cast and learned he may soon be leaving the hospital. But some believe Barbaro would have been spared his near-fatal injury had he been racing on an artificial surface. He put his leg down wrong and, and then swiveled on it, and the dirt held it. This polytrack would not. This polytrack would give. Polytrack, one of three competing brands, is a mixture of sand, recycled rubber, and synthetic fibers all coated in wax. That shock-absorbing surface has made racing at Kentucky's Turfway Park much safer. Turfway was the first track in North America to switch from dirt to this new synthetic surface. And the difference has been astounding. In the year before the switch, 24 horses suffered catastrophic injuries on the old dirt track. In the year since, only three have. And they're off. A safer surface is also better for business. With less wear and tear on the horses, owners can race them more often. And no matter how bad the weather, tracks rarely close. However, race times are slower. Thank you. Betters are having a hard time predicting performance on the new surface. There is no handicapping no more. You just pick numbers. And at six to eight million dollars per track, it is much more expensive than dirt compared with a horse which might have cost nine million and he goes out onto a track and breaks his leg uh, this is a cheap surface which is why last week Arlington Park outside Chicago began installing an artificial track and all California tracks must do so by the end of next year for trainer John Burke this revolution in racing is long overdue if a horse could talk he'd say hey thanks and what took you so long Jeff Morrell, ABC News, Lexington, Kentucky. And as Jeff mentioned, support for the artificial tracks is growing. Laura Hillenbrand, author of Seabiscuit, says their time has come. And you can watch an interview with her on our website, abcnews.com. When we come back here, we'll take you to a small southern town big on art. I smoked for forever. I can't count how many times I tried quitting. I can't tell you the number of times I tried quitting. Yeah, I worried about my health, but even that didn't help me quit. I would start out strong, then my willpower would fade. Now I know. For me, smoking is more than a habit. Smoking is a nicotine addiction. That's why I found it so hard to quit. That's why it was so hard for me to quit. The good news? Proven medical advances have been made in understanding nicotine addiction. For more information on how to quit smoking and how support can help, visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call 1-866-239-8729. I didn't have to blame myself. I know what kept stopping me. For free information about a plan to quit smoking and to find out about a prescription treatment option, visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call 1-866-239-8729. Now I understand. I think about quitting in a whole different way. I knew it was my time to quit. I knew it was my time. I knew it was my time to quit. This time I did it. Visit MyTimeToQuit.com or call now. <laughs> hey, Judy. Got a cough and stuffy nose? This Robitussin will relieve them both. <coughs> Hello? Gary, with the chest congestion, this Robitussin will help clear it right up. No matter what you've got, there's Robitussin relief with your name on it. The latest look in fiber is showing up everywhere. All natural Benefiber, the first fiber supplement that's tasteless and dissolves completely. So you can put it in whatever foods you fancy, even water. Benefiber, the latest look in fiber. If you have a cold and high blood pressure, you should know that decongestants in these cold medicines can raise your blood pressure. So why take them? Take decongestant-free Corsetin HBP. Powerful cold relief that won't raise your blood pressure. Mother Nature gave some animals warm winter coats, but others depend on Burlington Coat Factory. For designer coats up to 60% off department store prices. And now with our new cash back policy, there's no reason to be left out in the cold. 
You've been looking forward to a celebration this big all year. It's Red Lobster's Big Seafood Festival, a feast of new combinations of our biggest seafood. Indulge in rock lobster tail, king crab, and jumbo scampi. Only at Red Lobster. A bad sore throat. You want fast relief. The hospital strength relief of Sepacol lozenges. Sepacol numbs sore throat pain so fast. It's the number one choice of hospitals. The pain is gone. Sepacol ends your sore throat emergency. Lakers, Heat, NBA Christmas Day on ABC. Kobe takes on finals MVP Dwayne Wade in a game that's become a holiday tradition. Christmas Day, Lakers, Heat. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on ABC. Sunday, the new U.N. Secretary General faces George in his first Sunday morning interview. And on Christmas Eve morning, George and Barbara Bush in a personal and emotional holiday interview. This Sunday, only on This Week. And finally from us tonight, when you think of cities that have produced great art, the names Paris, Rome, London, and New York all come to mind. But probably not Paducah. But it turns out this Kentucky town is undergoing something of a renaissance with painters, potters, sculptors flocking in from all over the country. The question is, why? Tonight, ABC's Eric Hong has this portrait of the American landscape. At this Tony Manhattan gallery, the champagne-sipping patrons are buzzing about this drawing from artist Paul Lorenz. I loved it. it it's so intricate. Lorenz doesn't hail from Paris, London, or New York, but from Paducah, Kentucky. Lives in where? That's right, Paducah. This Riverside community, located a million miles from pretense, has seen an influx of artists from every corner of America. Lorenz moved here from San Francisco. It just seems so wrong. <laughs> Maybe this was right, you know? More than 70 artists live in Lower Town, a neighborhood once marred by poverty and vice. We had uh, drug houses and we had crime and uh, we had uh, ladies of the evening walking the streets. But that started to change six years ago when the city launched a unique urban renewal project. Lured by unbeatable incentives, artists who had never before owned property began buying and remodeling Lower Town's once grand homes. Washington native Mark Palmer bought this eyesore for one dollar and with a no down payment low interest loan transformed it into a palatial gallery and home. I don't even think you can get a cup of coffee anymore for a dollar in D.C. In this blue-collar red state city, some culture clash was inevitable. It was hard to get people just to, you know, open the door when the open sign was up. You know, they just would peek over it. Paducah has been around since before the Civil War, and art has long been a part of the community. These intricate murals in the city's flood wall are a testament to that. But art has never been seen as something that could drive the economy. Until now. Lower Town's galleries are a bona fide draw. The city says every dollar it's invested has returned 14. We will run out of real estate in Lower Town long before we run out of people who want to come and relocate. That success, in fact, has been studied by more than 100 communities coast to coast, from Syracuse, New York, to Fresno, California. These old Kentucky homes and their journey from blight to beauty have become Paducah's very own work of art. Eric Hong, ABC News, Paducah, Kentucky. Some art from the heartland tonight. And that is World News this Saturday. Thanks for watching. Tomorrow on Good Morning America, the thief who tried to steal Christmas. We hope you'll join us then. From all of us here at ABC News, I'm David Muir. Have a safe and happy holiday weekend. Have a good evening. Good night. Wednesday. What would you do if you saw someone this drunk? Get in, gross. About to drive, or saw a woman beating up a man? Dave, no! Prepare to be stunned as primetime's cameras catch our true basic instincts on tape Wednesday at 10. Stones River Motors is having a fantastic year-end sales event on all 2006 Nissans. Yes. Talk about VIP pricing. Stones River Motors is offering huge savings off MSRPs. Yes. From $1,000 up to $7,000 off all 2006 Nissan models. Yes. Like Nissan Titans, Xterras, Frontier Trucks, Muranos, and Pathfinders 2s. Yes. Check out the 2006 Nissan Altima 2.5S, available now for only $16,999. Yes. Hurry into Stones River Motors on Memorial Boulevard in Murfreesboro before it's too late. 
Like fine diamonds, we have sparkling facets in our lives. Promises, engagements, anniversaries. Service jewelry and repair makes those moments precious with a journey collection starting at just $149 to $14.99. For all the facets in your life, make the moment and her smile sparkle with a gift that says, I love you. Service jewelry and repair. From our family to yours, have a happy holiday season. 